Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Dix. I'm a physics teacher here at Redham House School. Today we are going to be looking at the core practical investigating waves so you can obtain accurate results in your own experiment. The first experiment we'll be looking at is investigating waves in water. You will be measuring the speed, frequency and wavelength of a water wave using a ripple tank. To carry out this experiment, you will need the following. Ripple tank, stopwatch, ruler, digital camera or smartphone. Firstly, set up a ripple tank with a straight dipper parallel to one of the short sides of the tank. This allows you a longer length so you have the ability to measure more waves. Next, place a ruler to one of the long sides of the paper below the ripple tank so you can see the markings. This is so you can easily measure the waves. Then you will need to vary the current to the motor. You will know when it's set to the correct current as the waves will be easy to count. Using your smartphone and stopwatch film and then count how many waves are formed in 10 seconds. Using your camera's slow motion function Record this number into a suitable results table. We now need to measure the wavelength of water waves. To do this, look at the waves against the ruler. We can look at the markings on the ruler to estimate the wavelength of the waves. To get a more accurate result, you could use a smartphone camera to take a photo of the waves on the ruler on the paper. To measure the wave, Mark two points on the edge of the paper below the ripple tank. This will be the starting and finishing points. Now measure the distance between them. You now need to get your stopwatch and smartphone. Using the slow motion function, time how long it takes a wave to go from the start mark to the finish mark. Make a note of this time. Ensure all of your data is in an appropriate results table remembering to add the correct units to the headings. To work out the speed of a single wave, divide the distance, which in this case is the length of the wave, by the time taken for the wave to pass one point to the next. Next, we need to find the frequency of the waves. To do this, we take the number of waves in 10 seconds and divide by 10. So if we counted five waves, we would divide five by 10 and the frequency would equal 0.5 Hertz. Finally, we need to calculate the speed of the series of waves. We do this by multiplying the wavelength of the wave that we measured earlier by the frequency you have just worked out. For the second part of this core practical, we will be measuring waves in a solid. Our aim is to determine the speed of sound in a solid. To carry out this experiment, you will need the following. Two clamps and stands, two rubber bands, a long metal rod up to a meter long, a meter rule, a hammer, a smartphone with a suitable frequency app. Firstly, you will need to suspend a metal rod horizontally using a clamp stands and rubber bands. Make sure you balance the rod over the feet of the clamp stand. This makes the apparatus stable and less likely to tip over. You now need to measure the speed of sound in the bar. We do this by hitting one end of the rod with a hammer. At the same time, hold your smartphone with a frequency app near the rod and then note down the peak frequency. Finally, you need to measure the length of the rod with your meter rule. Doubling this value will give you the wavelength. We calculate the speed of sound in a metal rod by multiplying the frequency by the wavelength using the equation shown. Your teacher may now provide you with further questions to help you reflect on the activities you have carried out during this core practical.